I've never made any secret of the fact that Olympus's gorgeous little 45mm f1.8 is one of the star lenses of the Micro Four Thirds system. A classic focal length for portraiture, it's razor sharp, compact, solidly built, and above all comes at a bargain price. It's a hard act to follow, let alone beat. Panasonic wisely took a different tack with their 42.5mm Noctichron. With a stunning and totally usable f1.2 aperture, it is also razor sharp and beautifully built, but compact it is not, and at six times the price bargain it is certainly not. Now, here is a true competitor for the celebrated Little Olympus offering, in the form of the Panasonic f 17 42.5mm. It is a pretty plain lens, all black with a focusing ring, and that's it. It comes with a neat bayonet fitting lens hood, which fits backwards to save space in the camera bag. And like the Olympus has a bayonet ring cover to neaten the look when the hood is not being used. It has built-in stabilisation so it's ideally suited to Panasonic's own cameras, which do not have in-body stabilisation. In the case of the GX8, which does, the lens and body systems coordinate to enhance the stabiliser efficiency. The diameter of the lens is small, which means that it can be used with Panasonic's tiny GM1 and 5 without overlapping the base plate. Compared to the Olympus, it is fatter and longer and heavier, but to a trivial extent, and certainly not enough to become a factor in the buying decision. So what about the performance? Overall, excellent sums it up. Centre field sharpness is beyond reproach at f17, and any improvement thereon, by stopping down, is academic. If I were photographing landscapes or buildings where edge to edge sharpness was crucial, I'd stop it down to 2.8 or beyond, but you'd need to pixel P but f17 to see any real world difference. Which means that for portraiture and low light use, wide open usage becomes the norm. I found this with the Noctichron too. Here is my highly scientific test with both makes of lens at open aperture. If you do stop down, it will be more to gain depth of field and extra sharpness than any performance increase, but hear my remarks later on purple fringing. Distortion is pretty much absent, but purple fringing is there wide open in the corner and under extreme conditions. Worse on the Olympus body than the Panasonic body, which corrects for it of course. Nevertheless, it is absent natively from the Olympus 45mm, as this shot shows. Focusing is, as you'd expect, sure-footed. With the GX8 it just flies, and it would seem to be reaching the limits beyond which improvement is pointless. I can't actually video and manipulate the camera fast enough, so it is easy to illustrate the speed via sound. I've used the GX8, Olympus EM1, and the Olympus 45mm for comparison. The cameras are set so that the shutter will not fire unless the shot is focused, and I'm moving as fast as I can from the orange to background and back pressing the button immediately so the shutter fires as soon as focus is achieved. I timed them shot to shot in audacity. Here's the GX8 and Panasonic lens. Here's the GX and Olympus lens. Here's the EM1 with the Panasonic lens. And the EM with the Olympus lens. The M52's times were the same as the M1's, just in case you were wondering. So, to sum up, in the two most desirable aspects of any lens likely to be used for portraiture, sharpness and focusing speed, this lens is unmatched by any other. Because of the pleasing perspective, I also like this sort of focal length for landscapes, but I'd stop down to 5.6 or so for critical use, not to improve sharpness, but to minimise any purple fringing in edge of frame high contrast areas, tree branches against the sky being the most notorious. The fringing won't show in normal viewing, but if you're making big prints it might. CA is easily enough eliminated in post-processing, but I prefer my straight out of camera results to be as near flawless as possible. That's my news photography training probably. The lens feels good and well made. A manual focuses easily due to its wide aperture and smoothly rotating focusing ring. The $64,000 question is, buy this Panasonic 42.5mm f17 or the Olympus 4518?
It's more the 60% question really, because the Panasonic costs that much more than the Olympus. If you have an Olympus body, the extra speed of the Panasonic is negligible. The sharpness difference is imperceptible, build quality and focusing speed are the same. No purple fringing, and you save money too. If you have an unstabilised Panasonic body, the equation is different. You gain stabilisation, quicker focusing, and a smidgen more speed, such that if the Olympus gave a shutter speed of a 30th wide open, the Panasonic would give a 32nd. And, of course, a bonus, slightly more colourful edge of photo experience. If you have a stabilised Panasonic body like the GX7 or GX8, the main gain for the extra money is the bit faster focusing. The logic for me is this. If you have an Olympus or stabilised Panasonic body, go with the Olympus. If you have an unstabilised Panasonic body, the F17 makes sense. If you already have the Olympus 45mm, as I have, keep it whatever the body you have. Thanks for watching.